Hi everybody, Steve from Steve's Makerspace here. Today we are in Scrap Mechanic and we are looking at this walker. Uh, Spursy showed me this. I thought it was the coolest thing. I wanted him to show me how it works. Uh, so that's what we're going to do today. And I have to apologize for some of the quality of the video. Uh, afterwards, I looked and it, it just kind of got messed up. I did the best I could. Hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. How do you how do you uh, say your name? Is it Spursy Boom? Oh well, it's the Dutch word for green bean. It's about it's most uh, most English speaking people call me Spursy. So Spursy, okay, Spursy. So um, Spursy, tell us what you're showing us today. <laughs> that looks interesting. Yes, well, this is uh, this is a walking a walking vehicle. I mean, there are many walking vehicles, but this one is special because it attempts to interact with the terrain. Uh huh. So regular walkers have, or most walkers kind of have like a pattern, like you know how you have the controller and how you can make a pattern in the controller, a movement pattern. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly that. That's basically what a lot of people do. Like I have another one like that. Oh, all right. Let, let me spawn in one of my pattern walkers because I also have those. Hilbert the horse needs Hilbert the horse. A, pet, a regular pattern. Yeah, this is. Oh, it's a horse. Yeah, this is the wall you see them the most. This thing just has a pattern, and it just does this. Oh, I like it. He's, he's sort of uh, looks like he's dainty <laughs> when he walks. He's also he is uh, he is the angsty horse. But yeah, this is this is this is just a pattern walker. It just has has a pattern, and depending on that pattern, it just shifts its feet between between the position where its front foot is on the ground and the position where its rear foot is on the ground on the left, and then just copy that and invert it. Uh huh. And uh, but yeah, those walkers like they can't really deal with terrain because like I mean they won't have all the feet on the ground because the terrain is obviously never exactly flat and then that's where dynamic walking comes in like mr legs uh-huh i'm gonna look up something uh right now i'm uh because i have a horse myself so mine is not exactly a walker it so the special thing about this is that it has authentic m movements of the the legs ah right yeah like i spent a I spent a long time trying to uh, studying the uh, the movements of horses to um, get the leg movements to look proper. Yeah, I see it. I can I can see that you that you try to emulate emulate kind of a horse walk. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, this is this is like the the, the most common type of walker you see. You have a fixed pattern in controllers, and then you kind uh. of kind of make it better yeah but the uh, it wouldn't actually go hardly any distance without the rocket uh, inside um, giving it assist so yeah and you're literally forcing it forwards yeah. yeah anyway um, just thought I'd show you that yeah I mean that's a nice introduction because this is like the most common type of walker that you see in workshop with with a fixed it's in essence also a fixed pattern and yeah, then we have this one this is actually a, di a dynamic walker this is one of my first dynamic walkers and it does interact with the terrain it will like if if it if it finds the pit, it will try to it will dip its feet into the pit until it reaches the depth of the pit, and then it will stop its feet. Like it, maybe better if we go to a bumpy part of the map because then we can actually really see uh, what it can do. Yeah, this is also one of my uh, at least I feel it's an interesting build. Doesn't really look that special, but it's it's uh, it's slip steering with gas acceleration. Uh huh. Yeah, and it has an automatic recovery system, so you don't have to get out and get it on the lift. Okay, this this drives nice. Whoa! <laughs> it's fun to drive. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> that is... Wow, this is neat. Okay. I like it. 
What do you call it? Uh, I just call it the six by six. <laughs> the six by six. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it's the GE buggy six by six, but whatever. Awesome. Like this was my first real dynamic walker. Like this one actually tries to conform to the terrain with its feet and step over small uh, small obstacles and recover from toppling and forwards and stuff. And it, 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 it simply steers by just, I just turn the front side. And then it just kind of figures out how to how to make a new gate that kind of works kind of works out while it's turning. Uh, so Spursy, uh, you gonna show us how your Mr. Legs works, huh? <clears throat> okay. So as you can see here, um, this is a leg, and this leg has two sensors. Uh, I colored one green and one purple just so you can easily see uh, how they are connected and how they interact. Okay. And this is also how the legs start uh, on any of these types of walkers if you spawn one. And uh, once you make, once you start the leg, it will do this. And how it achieves that is from starting position, it has two bearings. One bearing moves the leg down, one bearing moves the leg up. And this sensor, the purple sensor, is wired into an engine that, that moves the leg down. And before it wires into the engine, it goes into a NOR gate. And that causes this leg uh, to move down. But only move down until it sees the ground, and then it stops, just like this. Okay. And there's a, then there's a second step. Now the leg is touching the ground, and you could also see the, already see the piston extend. Well, that's just just the side effect of the sensor seeing the ground that makes this piston extend, which makes it push forward one step. Okay. And um, when it's in this phase of its movement, uh, it needs to return to the front. But that's where the green sensor comes in. Uh, the green sensor just looks if the piston has extended for more than four blocks by just looking at this gray block mm -hmm. at the top. Right. And if that, of that sensor buff, uh, that sensor buff is also connected through an OR gate to the engine that uh, lifts the, the, the leg up. Okay. So what that does is that it will automatically reset the leg. Um, yeah, it should automatically reset the leg because the green sensor is off. So the green motor will be on and that will lift the leg, which in turn will make this purple sensor not see the ground which in turn makes the piston return, uh, yeah, which, which makes the piston return and uh, which also makes it want to, uh, to move its leg down, but it can't because, because two engines running at the same time. So the end result is just the leg freezing in, in position. Okay. Okay. Good. Uh, all right, so let's see Mr. Legs. Yes, definitely. There he is. All right. Hello, yes. Mr. Legs. Yes. And he's he's and, ready he's uh, ready to go. <laughs> yeah, he definitely is. And I mean, Mr. Legs looks a lot more complex, but the basic principle is the same. It's just that the legs are are really complex. And well, I mean, just take a drive on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Let's take a drive. Uh, wait a minute. One. I gotta turn it on. There we go. And let me back up a little bit so I can see better. There we go. Yep. All right. He's kind of fast. You're yep. having to run to keep up with him. Yep. He's like my mission was actually to to make it to make it run like in more in the ballpark of, of a regular vehicle but like that's still relatively hard yeah but i will achieve that one day okay so he's a yeah i'm i'm trying to turn to the right and he's a um it, he is turning it takes a little time for him to turn yeah yeah that's because um, the front legs are more complex they have an extra degree of freedom to the sides so the front legs can basically strafe but the rear legs can't and that's why it's 
it's a bit like a car without a differential. Uh -huh. Like only the front legs can 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 stray sideways, the rear legs can't, and that kind of messes up its gait when you try to make a corner. So I kind of built in a routine that makes that stops the steering when it destabilizes. All right. That's why it steers so poorly. But yeah. Nice. So yep. um, let's take a look at one of these legs um, now that we've seen the demo. So we've got yeah, the yeah. one. This is the one that is looking at the ground right here. Yeah, yeah. Ignore the sensor that Lex looks for. That's just luxury. That's just luxury. So. Yeah. All right. So uh, that's going. The sensor is going up now. I see it's going to not just. Uh, I think the sensor back there went to two different places. This one's going to like yeah. four. Uh, extra functionality there is because it has it has it has a different steering routine as well. Um, or the steering routine like I, I need the information from this leg for more things. So the information from from the information of, of this leg being on the ground. Yeah. Like you, in the simple solution, you just use that information to kind of to drive the leg down and to uh, so yeah to drive the leg down and to push the piston out. Uh -huh. But right here, I'm kind of using the same signal to to plug in for a bunch of other things. Like the front legs, for an example, they they can't steer. Uh, Alright, the front legs are only supposed to strafe when they're on the ground because they. They first need to move into their starting position before they can push off to somewhere. Okay. Or else they can't push off. So that's basically why there's some of the extra wiring. I see. Like two of these extra wires are basically just there to 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 make to make the legs uh, work properly when they try to strafe. Okay. And the uh, tell me tell me about this luxury uh, sensor here. <laughs> what is, ah, yes. does that do? It uses that sensor to see if there's an obstacle in front of its foot. Ah, yeah. and then it lifts so, lifts the foot higher? Yeah, yeah, and how that works is when the ground sensor is seeing something, it's always the ground, and it's nearly always just the feet being on the ground or not. Uh -huh. But this extra sensor uh, kind of uh, makes that like, uh, when it lifts up the leg, if the the ground signal immediately stops when it lifts up the leg, usually. Uh -huh. But with this, the ground signal keeps on growing until the uh -huh. foot is high enough that it can clear the obstacle. Ah, oh, yeah. very good. That's simply how it works. There is not even a circuit behind it. Just it just plugs into the. I think it even plugs into the same gate. Yeah. Yeah, it plugs into the same gate. Yeah, it does. Okay, good. That makes sense. Uh, what about um, these sensors up here? But right above my head. What is that doing? Yeah, and the, those are for general ground clearance. You can also see that this one has three engines per leg instead of the two that I demonstrated, and that's because I deliberately left out the ground clearance sensor because you mm -hmm. you don't really need it that much, especially if your walker is really light. But it is really handy to have. And this thing, uh, this thing, what these sensors basically do is, is if the ground is too close, it, or it will, it will send extra power to the leg, uh, to the leg that's closest to it. That's basically what it does. Oh. And that's what the extra engine does. It just delivers extra power when, if, when, when, when some foot is on the ground and when, when it needs some extra ground clearance there. Okay. That's great. And that's all the engine does. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. It, it's like the the logic is simple and complex at the same time. I'm <laughs> if that makes any yep. sense. Oh yeah, that does make sense. Yeah, it's um it's elegant. Um if yeah. you're if you're familiar with that term for, you know, doing coding. Um Oh, right, yeah. yeah. When when, yeah. when there's a program that's just just works really nicely, but isn't, uh, you know, overly complex. But it just yeah. is simple um, and clear. Um, I'd say that that's that's what this looks like to me. It's very optimized. Yeah. The main advantage of this is that that it doesn't have any processing delay internally. Uh huh. Like right. The only processing delay that it does have is uh, because all the four legs, and let's see what this does again, this is the... Yeah, all four legs are kind of networked, 
with the front legs being dominant and the rear legs kind of following the front legs. And how it is networked is, uh, you know, I showed you that you, that you can use a switch to kind of like stop the feet in a specific position, right? Uh -huh. Well, uh, you can just use the signal from one leg to tell the other leg to not lift or, or to only lift if the other leg is on the ground. Okay. By, by just by just just putting one wire between this green gate and the same other green gate, mm -hmm. and that's basically the whole network. That's the only the only logic on gate that, that works on gates that's active in this machine. It's four gates basically that interconnect the legs, and that's it. Okay. Yeah, and they're already existing gates. Cool. So this uh, this is on the workshop. Yeah, definitely. Definitely cool. Nice All right, awesome. Let's end the, the video with some music. Sure. <laughs> don't go do 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 do. legs. <laughs> all right, and I'll uh, leave a link to all the Spursy's, Spursy Boone stuff. All right. Thanks a bunch, Spursy. Yeah, thank you for watching. One more thing. Spursy does have a YouTube channel. I'm going to leave a link to that channel in the description. Go send him some love. Uh, if you've liked this video, please hit the like button. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel. Put some comments below. And let me know what you think. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye now. Steve's Makerspace.